declaring out of your mouth what the word says. How many of you know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word? Amen. How many know it's impossible to please God without faith? Amen. And he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How many of y'all believe that God can do anything? That's, that's light. Let me say that again. How many of y'all believe that God can do anything? Amen. Amen. He can absolutely do anything. Let's pray and then we'll get into this. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the anointing that rests upon me, your servant, the anointing that rests upon your people to receive and to hear, to hear your word, to apply your word, to live your word. We thank you for the anointing that rests upon each and every person in this room on Zoom and those that will hear this message via YouTube. Father, we thank you right now for the Holy Spirit's help to declare your mind, to release in the atmosphere that which will encourage, will lift up, build up your people, create an expectation for the impossible. Father, we thank you even now that you will confirm your word in the days to come with signs following. For some, Lord, I pray an immediate manifestation of the results of their faith in you and adherence to the word of God. Father, we thank you that you can do absolutely anything. And we believe that. Because you're not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. Have you not said it and shall you not make it good? So we believe your word. And that settles it in Jesus name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you. I, I want to talk to you from this subject. Miracles happen where faith lives. Miracles happen where faith lives. And as a subtitle. God still works miracles. How many of y'all believe that? Just in case the devil has lied to us over the last three years that there's some things too hard for God. I want to remind you that there's nothing too hard for God. Tell your neighbor. So neighbor, neighbor. There, is there is nothing too hard for God. And this scripture came to me. This is not part of my message, but I want to share it with you anyway. Here out of Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So God asks us the question, I've created all flesh. I'm creator. So in other words, I made something out of nothing. You hear that? God says, I made something out of nothing. So someone who can make something out of nothing can do anything. He says, is there anything too hard for me? So in other words, the things that we're looking at, the things that we're dealing with, the things that we may be experiencing sometimes place limitations on us. And in our minds, they can place limitations on God's ability. But God's ability exceeds natural ability. God's ability exceeds natural circumstances. God's ability exceeds natural possibilities. So he says, is there anything too hard for me? I was, I was talking to uh, my spiritual son over in Kenya the other day. Uh, last week it was. And of course, they're going through some really trying things. And they always do because on the continent of Africa, uh, they're the richest continent on the planet, but the poorest people on the planet. And so many times people who have the same color skin as you and I struggle more than any other people group on the planet. Yet still they have access to more wealth than any other people group on the planet. There is something uh, wrong with that. And of course, we understand it's a spiritual thing. But they're, they're struggling and they depend so much on the faith of us here in the U.S. to help them over there. And when we get challenged, they get challenged. 
And so I felt the burden over the last few weeks of their challenge. And the Lord began to challenge me. And it's always a spiritual answer to a natural situation. And so whereas they were struggling with provision and all of these different things, and the Lord spoke to me from the prophet uh, Elijah, and I'll share this with you early, uh, later in the, in the message, uh, and he just spoke just a piece of the zip code of a particular text and story in 2 Kings. And of course is the, uh, the story of the, the widow at Seraphat, and we'll share that. The prophet goes to her, there's a famine in the land, and he's experiencing the same famine that this woman is experiencing, and she's preparing to die. She's got a little supply in the house. She says she's going to do something with it. She's going to make it up. She's going to feed herself and her child, and then she's going to die. And the prophet says to her, I know you got a dire situation. What do you have in your house? And then he asks the question, what do you have in your hand? Because God is about to take an impossible situation and superimpose his possibility upon it. And so the Lord said to me, tell him, I don't want you to ask him the question, what does he have in his house? I don't want you to ask him the question, what does he have in his hand? I want you to ask him this question, what do you have in your heart? And he answered me the right way. He said, faith. I said, then you have enough. Because the faith in your heart is enough to get the job done. Because all we need is faith in our heart and God will do the impossible. He's just looking for somebody that believes. So all of these circumstances over the last three years have challenged your pastor to believe beyond what we're experiencing. And so Pastor Herbert was praying this morning and I heard his heart and I get in agreement with that prayer because he was speaking forth the resource center center in the natural. There's no way in the world we can do it in the natural. But in the spirit, in the spirit realm and by the faith of God. All things are possible because God can do the impossible where there is no possibility. Come on, say amen. I want to remind you that God is still a God of miracles. Come on, say amen. amen. Bless the Lord. So, so let's look. Let's look in the scriptures. I want you to go with me to uh, John's gospel chapter 2. And I want to look at the first miracle that happens in Jesus' life and ministry after that he is anointed of the Holy Ghost. Remember, prior to Jesus being anointed of the Holy Ghost, there's no, 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 no headlines. There is no storyline of any miracles ever happening until he was anointed of the Holy Ghost and inaugurated by the Father's voice. This is my beloved son in whom I will please hear ye him. And so no miracles have manifested. And Jesus is at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Go to John chapter 2. I want to build your faith for miracles. And, and see, some of y'all, you don't realize miracles have been happening in your life already. Come on. Come on. I, I want you to think miracles have been happening in your life. Or it doesn't have to be something extravagant. It doesn't have to be winds and, you know, turbulence and all this other stuff uh, 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 attached to your miracle. But you have been experiencing the miraculous. You have been experiencing miracles. You have testimonies of God's miraculous power that has been manifesting in your life. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let me help you out with this. Tell your name's a neighbor. You are a miracle. The new birth was the first miracle that took place in your life. God took a dead person and come on, brought him back to life. He changed you. He changed. He took out the stony heart. A heart that wasn't even looking for him. Couldn't even love. Full of hate. Full of bitterness. And he changed it. You are a miracle. 
So the first miracle that manifests in our life is the new birth. It's a changed life. People still trying to figure out who you are, why you are, and how you are the way you are. John chapter 2, verse 1 through 11, TPT. And I want to read through this. Now on the third day, Jesus' mother went to a wedding feast in, in the Galilee village of Cana. Jesus and his disciples were all invited to the banquet. But with so many guests, they ran out of wine. So wine is at the center of this unfolding or unveiling of who Jesus is in his glory. No wine. You think God, if, if God is concerned about wine, he's not concerned about you. And this is a wedding. God is concerned about them having no wine for a wedding celebration. Now watch this. I want you to follow this now. And when Mary realized it, Mary realized it. So there's something about Mary's involvement at this wedding that she is, she is now tracking the details of what's happening at this wedding. You have to kind of be in charge of something to realize when something ain't going the way it should be going. So why is it that Mary realizes that the wine has run out? She has to be in charge of something. So historically, it is said that Mary is in charge of this wedding. She's a wedding planner. And Jesus and his disciples are guests. They are invited. So Mary realizes that there is something wrong and she takes charge, but she knows who to go to. Watch this now. And when Mary realized that she came to Jesus and asked, they have no wine. Can't you do something about it? <laughs> so why does she place a demand on Jesus? Because Jesus evidently have been doing something about some things already. And Jesus replied, my dear one, don't you understand if I do this, it will change nothing for you, for you. In other words, nothing natural about your life is going to change. But if I do this, something is going to change for me. In other words, Jesus says right now I'm under the radar. But the moment I work this miracle, I'm no longer hidden I'm revealed. There's a disclosure of who I am. So he says this miracle has more implications for me than it does for you. My dear one, don't you understand? If I do this, it will change nothing for you, but it will change everything for me. John chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. I don't know what verse I'm at because I don't have scripture in verse. He says, but it will change everything for me. It will change everything for me. Do you not know that my life is going to change from this moment forward if I do this thing that you're requesting of me? He said, my hour of unveiling, my power has not yet come. So here's what I want you attached to a miracle. Every time you see a miracle, it is the unveiling of God's power. But it's also the uncovering of the manifestation of the glory of Jesus. So he's saying, it's not time for me to be revealed. But you're placing a demand upon me outside of God's timing. But there's something about the faith in Mary's heart that's now going to get the father to do something through the son on her behalf that's really outside of his timing. Don't y'all want to interrupt God? <laughs> Come on now. Don't y'all want to get his attention? Because that's what Mary is, is illustrating for us, that she's about to get God's attention to do something that really the son is not really in time or, or on time for doing. She says, Mary then went and he says, but it will change everything for me. My hour of unveiling my power has not yet come. Mary then went. Watch, watch, watch Mary. Now let's track with Mary. Tell your name's neighbor. Let's track with Mary. Let's track with Mary. Now watch Mary. Watch Mary. Say, say, say miracles happen where faith lives. So she's, Jesus already said, wait a minute. You want me to do something before my time? 
He didn't say no. Notice he didn't say no. He says, you want me to do something before my time. But it doesn't stop Mary. Doesn't stop her. Watch her. Let's track with her. Mary then went. Mary then went to the servers and told them. Whatever he tells you, do it. So Mary, Mary is setting this. Listen, Jesus, my time is not yet. But Mary is placing a demand on God. Tell your neighbors and neighbor. Place a demand on God for what seems impossible in your life right now. So she's placing a demand on him. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now, I love this. Now, you would think. I said, miracles happen where faith lives. Mary obviously has faith because you remember an angel came to Mary <laughs> and told her that the power of this holy God is going to overshadow her and some holy thing is going to be birthed through her life. So she had to believe that word. And as a result, she sees the manifestation of that holy thing standing in front of her. So obviously she's had an encounter with responding and believing God's word and, and come on and placing a demand on him to fulfill what he has said. So she has some history, but I don't know if these servers have the history that Mary has. So Mary now tells these servers, whatever he tells you to do, do it. So this miracle now is not mandated by Mary's faith. It's mandated by the servers' faith. They have never seen Jesus do a miracle, but now they are about to follow some instruction from Jesus. And because they are following instruction, they put the miracle in motion. Watch this transfer. So, so think about this now. Here's these servers. Mary tells them, whatever he tells you to do, do. Now watch, let's track with these servers now. So Jesus tells these, tells these servers, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Nearby stood six stone pots meant to be used for the Jewish washings, uh, washings rituals. So they cleansed their hands in this water. So these pots were not filled. Each one could hold up to 20 gallons or more. This is the TPT. Now think about this now. These are pots, clay pots. They have no water in them. Jesus tells the servers, fill each one of them up. Each one of them are going to hold about 20 gallons of water. Tell your neighbor's a neighbor. There is no wine in these clay pots. I want you to track with me. There's only water in the clay pots. He says, fill them up. They're empty with water. This is the working of miracles. They are tracking with Jesus. They are following his instruction, but their faith in the instruction that he's giving them is the working of miracles. Because those pots are empty, they must be filled with water. They are now, watch this now, they're flowing with him by faith. He says, fill, he says, he says, fill the pots with water right up to the very brim. Now watch this now. It takes faith to do this now. You're the server. Jason. Jesus just told you, fill up these six pots with water. You're at the wedding. You know you got multiple guests. Now, the first set of guests, they already drunk all the wine. There ain't no more left. The celebration is still going on. The master of the ceremony, he don't even know there's no more wine left. But he knows that this wedding's been going on for a while. So we're midway through this wedding. The celebration ain't over yet. But then Jesus tells you, Hey, fill up these six pots with water. You do that. You see water go into these pots. Now, Jesus gives you another instruction. He's going to challenge your faith now. Because if you have faith enough to fill these pots up with water, you obviously are walking by faith. Now, here's the next step. Now, take a picture 
and dip it into one of these containers and lift out some water and take it over to the master of the ceremony and let him taste it. You got to have faith because you just looked in there and you saw water. It didn't turn into wine until you poured it. So you had to have faith in your heart. You're tracking with Jesus. You're following the instruction. There's a miracle working. That There's a miracle in the working while you're working with Jesus. Come on now. Listen, listen. There's a miracle manifesting. It is in the works while you're working with him in every step and every stage. The miracle does not manifest until he tells you dip your pitcher into the container. Take out the water and pour it. You got to believe that when you pour it, it's going to become wine. So watch this now. So the faith of the servants are at the heart of the manifestation of this miracle, not Mary. Mary put it in motion. Now it's the faith in the heart of the servants that this miracle is now manifesting on their behalf as they follow the instruction of Jesus. Then he said, now fill your pictures and take them to the master of the ceremonies. And when they poured out their pictures for the master of the ceremonies to sample, notice the water had become wine. The water had become wine. Sickness went from sickness to health. You and I, when we follow the instruction that God gives us, there is a working of a miracle where faith lives in you. When we follow the instruction, there is a working of a miracle. That's why I don't want you. That, that, that's why I want you to be encouraged today. That miracles. God still works miracles. But most often you're going to find a partnership with God. In the manifestation of a miracle. So you see a partnership here. From Mary to Jesus to the servants. Until uh, uh, what, 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 what they are now placing a demand on Jesus to do. Happens because there are partnering with him but faith in their hearts and acting on the instruction is what put that miracle in motion you see that and when he tastes the water look at what he says that hit it become wine the master of the ceremonies was impressed with its quality Although he didn't know where the wine had come from, only the servers knew. So these servers are transformed for all of eternity. Why? Because this just manifested Jesus' glory. Every host serves his best wine first until everyone had a cup or two. Then he serves the cheaper wine. But you, my friend, have you reserved the most exquisite wine until now. The miracle in Cana was the first of the many extraordinary miracles Jesus performed in Galilee that revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. So most often God manifests miracles so that people can believe. But where faith lives, miracles happen. So God will manifest miracles so people can believe. But wherever faith is resident in the heart, a miracle can happen. So what God wants you and I, I this is what the Lord said to me, I'm going to say it to you. Between now and Resurrection Sunday, whatever you need, start building your faith. Some are going to get it immediately, some will get it by that time. Start building your faith. Because where faith lives, miracles happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
So it says historically that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a wedding planner. This was the, the cause for her concern that there was no wine. Jesus and his disciples were just invited guests. Jesus was not supposed to historically reveal who he was at that setting, but they placed a demand upon him. Let me share something else. What, what is a miracle? A miracle is generally defined as that which causes wonder and astonishment, being extraordinary in itself and amazing, or an unexplainable by normal standards. Unexplainable by normal standards. Strong's calls a miracle, use the same word, Dunamis for miracle because it is God's power and ability achieving a result. It does not separate power from a miracle because it requires God's power. A miracle is that which is what the Lord said to me. A miracle is that which is the result of supernatural power an ability being superimposed upon that which has deficient or no power and ability to create power and ability where there was deficient or no power or ability. So in short, where there is no power, where there is weakness, where is there deficiency, where there is nothing, God superimposes his power and ability upon that to create power and ability. So we, by our faith, can draw upon God's power and ability to take care of our deficiency of power or no power to create power where there's deficiency of power or no power. And the dictionary says it this way, a highly probable or extraordinary event, development or accomplishment that brings very welcomed consequences. Amen. How do you know when God does something extraordinary in your life, it brings welcome consequences. And that consequence is thanksgiving and praise. So, so miracles have not ceased. Say that to your neighbor. Miracles have not ceased. Our God still is in the miracle business. See, see, that's one thing about having services where you call them miracle services. That means you're seeking a miracle. God never wants us to seek a miracle. He wants us to seek him, the God of the miracle. So you can call it all you want to call it. And you can manifest all the stuff you want to manifest. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a miracle service. Until God does something that brings glory to himself, you're just playing around and you're just hyping things up and you're just emotionalizing and making people feel like they've come into something supernatural. But it could be just emotion. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But when God manifest a miracle you won't need eyewitness news you won't need cnn you won't need fox god himself will use the life of the individual as his own advertisement because this is what his miracles have not ceased every miracle is a testament to the benevolent love for humanity and God and, and a manifestation of God's glory. So it is, is it is a testament of God's benevolent love for humanity. This is why he does it. The miracle itself is not what we seek. And that's why people have problems with, you know, miracle services and deliverances and healings and all these different things because they see a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. But we still should believe for miracles. Yes, Amen. Yes, I know people, you know, 
they over-dramatize a whole lot of stuff, sensationalize a whole lot of stuff, but God still works miracle. Say, I know he does. I know he does. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We should expect, we should live by faith, but we expect God to do something divine in our lives. And he has been. And I'm going to show you. I mean, we can all go back and recount. That's why I want you. I, I want you to remember, you know, that this miraculous working God has been already doing miracles in your life. So we should live and expect him to keep doing it. So in almost every case where a miracle is needed. It arrived where faith was, faith was living. That's the point I want, I want to make. In almost case, every case where a miracle arrived, it arrived where faith was living. Therefore, a miracle is a manifestation of the nature of God. It is within him to reveal his glory through divine intervention into the lives of people who have circumstances that seem to be impossible. God is still working miracles in our time. We have the Bible that gives us example after example of what initiated the birth of miracles in the lives of those we read about. If you are in need of a miracle in your life, I want you to be encouraged to believe God for one, for yourself, for your life, for you. In the Gospels, there are 37 recorded miracles that our Lord performed. There were many more that were not recorded, but these were so that we may believe miracles produce faith in God's ability. But where faith lives, miracles happen. So let me give you an example. I was talking about Kenya earlier. Have no money. Pastor Emmanuel sent me a picture of this, this food line. They were feeding all of these children. Just feeding. Where did they get the money? It wasn't money. The Lord told me to tell them. Whatever you. He says, what do you have? You don't have it in your hand. You don't have it in your house. He says, but what do you have in your heart? Ask him that question. Faith. Right. So. With the faith in his heart. He became creative. And he saw that he could. Trust God and feed all these hundreds of children. And he had the faith to believe that the little they had would be enough multiplied by God to feed all these children. It wasn't money. It was faith because of faith in their heart caused them to become resourceful with little and God multiplied it. To feed, and that was a miracle. They should not have been able to feed that many children. So miracles happen wherever faith lives. Tell your names, the neighbor. Do not limit God in this season of your life. I want to show you this one, and I really believe we all need to partner right here. Because there are miracles that you can get in on. How many of y'all want to get in on a miracle? But this one ain't for you. All right. You want to get in on this one? All right. You ready? It ain't for you initially, but it will be for you in the end. I want to show you this miracle. Because you can't operate in this and not be a partaker of this yourself. There are miracles of intercession. What do I mean? There are miracles that happen when people demonstrate their faith in God on behalf of others who are in need and lift them into the presence of God to receive their miracle. So in other words, you are the agency in which God deploys or you allow God to deploy you to use you to help somebody else to receive a miracle. I call this the miracle of intercession. Mm -hmm. 
And here's what's so powerful about that. You can't work your faith on behalf of someone else for a miracle and not receive one yourself. You want, you want to see it in the scripture? All right. I want to show you a perfect picture of it in scripture. The power of faith and intercession that helps someone receive their miracle, which means we can participate in someone else's receiving a miracle from the Lord. And that bless you. You can participate. Go to Mark chapter two. Let's look at this. I want to show you a couple couple places in the scriptures where miracles happens, where faith lives. Mark chapter two. Look at verse one to twelve. TPT. I want to read this so we can just see the backdrop in it. Is it several days later? Jesus entered into Capernaum. And the news quickly spread that he was back in town. Soon there were so many people crowded inside the house to hear him that there was no more room even outside the door. So just get a picture of this. The noise, the, 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 the hoopla around the fact that Jesus is in this one house in this town. And people know by now who he is. For all of the miracles that's taking place. And so it says that there was no room inside or outside. Say obstacles. 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 Sometimes there are obstacles in your way of receiving your miracle. And this is why you need people who intercede. Who know how to stand in the gap for you. And this is a picture of, uh, and I've never seen this before, but this is a picture of intercession. Watch this now. I don't want you to get this in your mind. While Jesus was preaching the word of God, four men arrived. Check out these four men. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man. Tell you, say, say neighbor, who are you carrying in this season? Better yet, neighbor, who are you lifting into the presence of the Lord? In other words, we, we know we have a need, but we're using our faith for somebody else's need, for somebody else's miracle. We're demonstrating the faith of God from our own hearts that we believe God, not just for ourselves, but for somebody else while we are in need. So these four men arrive carrying a paralyzed man, but they have obstacles. They can't get in the house. There's people blocking the door from outside and inside is just too crowded. But when they realize that they couldn't even get near him because of the crowd, woo, they went up on top of the house. Tell you, it's a neighbor. You got to go up high. I tell you, this is a picture of intercession. Because down here, we're dealing with a lot of obstacles. There's a lot of stuff that you can't see that may be preventing your reception of your miracle. Yes. Yes. But now what they do is they say, wait a minute, there's a crowd outside, there's a crowd inside. We got to get to the presence of God. We got to lift this man above this, these obstacles. Our faith is... Is going to lift him and, and whatever we got to do, our faith is going to lift him into the presence of God. Amen. So you got to understand what prayer does. Right. Prayer takes the roof off stuff. <laughs> come on now. Prayer, come on. Prayer creates an open heaven. And, and, and what these men did, they saw the obstacles. So they had to create an open heaven. They, they, they had to remove the obstacles to lift the man into the presence of God. They're going to make sure this man gets his miracle. Y'all tracking with me? Y'all see this? But when they realized they couldn't even get near him because of the crowd, they went up on the top of the house and tore away the roof. Tell your neighbors a neighbor. You got to tear some stuff out the way. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Tear it down. Tear it up. 
whatever you got to do. Because, see, that's what, inter come on, come on up. Pluck up, pull down, establish. That's a prophetic intercessor. But when they realized they couldn't even get near him because of the crowd, they went up on the top of the house and tore away the roof above Jesus' head. Woo! They tore away the roof above Jesus' head. Watch this now. And they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front of Jesus. You see what intercession does? Intercession brings people right into the presence of God. Is there anybody you know right now needs your intercession? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Because I know that, that I need a miracle. And the Lord has placed some people personally on my heart in this season to pray them through. I'm believing God for their miracle personally. But I'm going to get mine too. That's right. Come on. Hallelujah. That's where we're going. <laughs> That's where we're going. Tell your neighbors and neighbor. Miracles happen where faith lives. So look at how these men are demonstrating their faith. They saw the obstacles. They lift this man. That's, they took on the burden. They took on the burden. And they lift him up into a high place and created an open heaven so they can lower him into the presence of God. And I love what Jesus did. They lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in the front of Jesus. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he says, I got to give this man a miracle. Y'all went through all of that. Glory to God. You weren't worried about yourself. You weren't thinking about your own needs. You, you, you broke the, come on, you, you broke the roof off the sucker. Glory to God. <laughs> to make sure this man got his miracle. I got to heal him. I got to heal him. Because I saw where faith was. Listen. The faith in your heart will take all the selfishness out of you. That's right. That's right. That's it. Anybody got big enough faith, not just for yourself, Come on, man. but for somebody else? Then you're going to get the overflow. Come on. In the name of Jesus. So when Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he said, paralyzed man. My son, your sins are now forgiven. This offended some of the religious scholars who were present and they realized among themselves. Who does he think he is to speak this way? This is blasphemy. This blasphemy for sure. Only God himself. You don't know who he was. Only God himself can forgive sins. Jesus supernaturally perceived their thoughts and said to them, why are you being so skeptical? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are now forgiven or stand up and walk. But be convinced, but, but to convince you that the son of man has been given authority to forgive sins. I say to this man, stand up, pick up your stretcher and walk home. Immediately the man was healed and sprang to his feet in front of everyone and left the home. When the crowd witnessed this miracle, they were awestruck. And that's what God wants to do. Make some people awestruck. And he's going to use you. They shouted praises to God and said, we've never seen anything like this. In other words, Pastor Herbert would say this way. We've never seen it on this wise. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. God is about to work some extraordinary miracles in our lives. Listen, while, while, while all of this craziness is going on and the church is looking impotent, there's got to be some people, man, who are placing a demand on God for the real supernatural. Not some fabrication, not smoke and mirrors, not dark lights and streams and all this different stuff. I'm talking about the raw manifestation of God's presence and power just because we believe with no frills. 
So intercession lifts those who we pray for beyond all barriers into the presence of God to receive a miracle. Faith knows no way. Faith knows the way of access into the presence of God. You know the way by faith. By faith. Our God in his benevolent love responds to faith. Those who carried the paralyzed man were intercessors. I want you to see that parable. I mean, that story like that. I mean, that story right there as intercession. That's what it is. Okay. That's, that's so who are you praying? Who, whose miracle are you praying for? Mm -hmm. Pastor Herbert said it, Job chapter 42, verse 10. When Job prayed for his friend. The Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. How many of y'all want that kind of miracle? Twice as much as before. I'm going to use this last illustration today. Here's a powerful illustration of, of miracles that happen where faith, faith lives. Y'all know this story. The ten, the ten men with leprosy stood at a distance as they understood the law forbidding them to have contact with people who did not have the disease. What did Jesus do? He does not immediately heal the lepers, uh, the leprosy sufferers, but test their faith by asking them to do to go and see the priests. They were healed on the way so miracles happen where faith lives so this is why Jesus tests them so think about this the social dynamic behind leprosy in that day and hour it was an incurable situation if God did not intervene and cure that leprosy they were a whole colony unto themselves they were Social distant. Y'all know that term. They were socially distant from everybody, culturally, in the community. They had no access to people. And so prior to being diagnosed or, or doing the process of being diagnosed by leprosy, the priest had to inspect them. He had to say, okay, these people are leprous. They had to be uh, uh, removed from the population and they had to live separate lives. But here in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19 TPT, I want you to look at some things and I want you to equate this in the sense that in almost every case where there was a miracle, it took faith in the hearts of the recipients in order for that miracle to manifest. Luke 17, 11 through 19. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus passed through the border region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered one village, 10 men approached him. But they kept their distance for they were lepers. They shouted to him, mighty Lord, our wonderful master, won't you have mercy on us and heal us? So they make a request. That's a request. How many know we can, we can cry in pain? We want something, but we're really not in a position to receive it. And many times we do that. So God does something. Jesus does something to test them. Do you really want what you ask for? Do you really want it? Okay. Here's the conditions. I heard your request. You appealed on my mercy, but I need something from you. How many know that God works that way? He needs something from us. What does he need? Faith. So he says to these lepers, they shouted to him, mighty Lord, our wonderful master, won't you have mercy on us and heal us? And Jesus stopped. In other words, they got his attention. To look at them. He spoke these words. Go be examined by the Jewish priests. 
Because they knew. The priests inspected their condition. And if their condition cleared up by virtue of some cleansing or by virtue of God's intervention, they still had to be inspected by the priests in order to be reintegrated into regular community. So Jesus says, okay, you asked me, here's my challenge. Here's a faith challenge. You asked me for it on my mercy. Now go show yourself to the priest. Ten of them. Go show yourself to the priest. They could have stood right there. Go show yourself to the priest. The moment they started, well, even if their mind wasn't in, in agreement with, the, even if their heart wasn't in agreement with it, even if they were still struggling in their head, the moment they started walking, the miracle started manifesting. Go show yourself to the priest means you realize that the, the priest has to examine you and say clean. And so the moment they started walking, nothing really happened. But the moment they kept going, the miracle started manifesting. When he said, go show yourself to the priest, no miracle started. No miracle happened until they started walking. Then the miracle started manifesting. He says, okay, go show yourself to the priest. That's when faith had to be alive in their heart because they knew what that meant. The priest is the only one that can pronounce me clean. You see it? Go be examined by the Jewish priests. They set off. They were healed. Here it is. They were healed while walking along the way. So God gives you a word. He gives you a word. He gives you an instruction. That immediately puts you to motion. Your miracle is manifesting while you're going. Your mi come on now. Because it's, it's almost just like Peter. Okay, Jesus. Bid me to come. Come on, Peter. On the power of that word. The moment that Peter stepped out on the word. Not the water. On the word. Peter was walking. But when Peter looked at the circumstances. He started to sink. So while you and I act on that word with faith in our heart, the miracle is happening. I know I'm completely healed. I, I, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. Anybody know you're completely healed? And then he says, one of them, a Sumerian, when he discovered that he was completely healed, there it is, completely healed, turned back to find Jesus, shouting and joyous praising, praises and glorifying God. For he found Jesus. He fell down at his feet and thanked him over and over. And that's a prescription right there. When you know that you are healed, just keep thanking him over and over. Saying, you are the Messiah. In other words, you're Lord. He says, so where are the other nine, Jesus asked. Were there not ten who were healed? They all refused to return to give thanks and glory to God. Glory to God except you, a foreigner of Samaria. Then Jesus said to the healed man lying at his feet, arise and go. For your faith that brought you salvation and made you whole. See that? The miracle happened because faith was living in his heart. The moment he said, go show yourself to the priest. 
his miracle begin to manifest. I'll end with this thought here. This is notable mention. Just remember this. The woman with the issue of blood acted on what she heard was happening through the life of Jesus in her region. She acted on what she heard. Faith in her heart at the time. Faith was in her heart at the time she intercepted Jesus en route to Jairus' house. She drew on the miraculous power that flowed from Jesus. Her healing is not attributed to Jesus' power or ability, but her faith that placed a demand on the power of the miraculous virtue that flowed from him. So Jesus didn't say, I did it. He said, your faith. In other words, the miraculous power was in him. So miracles happen where faith lives. And that's why I'm saying to you, the Lord says, give you this encouragement. Begin whatever you have to do. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, whatever you have to do. And here's what the Lord said to me to tell you. What am I saying? We need to do whatever we have to do. To saturate our hearts with God's word to produce faith. Miracles will happen with faith. You know, when I think about, I think about there, 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 the, the only miracle that I have seen happen in my life, which is consistent with the scripture, in many cases, is just the sovereignty of God, is this one of protection. But there's still faith. Because we believe God for many of us pray like that every day. And then you find yourself in a predicament that, that is so overwhelming and may cause awe and fear. But here is God divinely intervening and working a miracle for you. I'll never forget, you know, several years ago, again, I shared this before, you know, driving on the highway 87 South and all of a sudden I'm praying in the middle of the morning, leaving my house, praying, praying in the spirit. I'm in the fast lane. I'm driving. There's one car up ahead of me. It's a, it's a Lincoln Continental or black Lincoln Continental. All of a sudden it hits the guardrail, pops up in the air. I said, my God, when I, I felt like I was in a movie because I'd never seen anything like this in the natural, the car is spinning around like this this the car that was behind it went right under it the whole time i was praying i heard the holy ghost say move to the right i moved to the right the car that was behind it went past it the car came back down landed on the tires and kept going i said oh my god so 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 that's a miracle you know several years ago uh, 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 Janiqua, I mean, in a car accident, you know, she calls on the name of Jesus and comes, cars total, comes out of the car and nothing's wrong with her. Pastor Alton E. Herbert, you, you were excited about something else one day driving your car. There's, there, there's this open thing in front of you. You feel like somebody puts, you know, the, the metal to the pedal for you and, and you don't fall into the hole. Three years ago, I'm driving on the highway and the Holy Ghost prompts me again to pray. It's raining cats and dogs and I'm in the middle lane and I'm driving and all of a sudden I see this car coming out of the fast lane with the lights towards me coming directly at me and there's no way I'm going to be able to avoid it and all of a sudden I feel something shift me to the left and I go right around and I shift back to the right and the car goes across from me and I thought I was going to hear all of this metal cracking and I see nothing. I hear nothing. It's a miracle. So something, I mean, I felt like I, I, I felt like I was outside of myself because at that moment I could not disbelieve. I didn't see myself dying. I said, somehow I'm getting through this situation, but I didn't know how it was going to happen. God put his angel in that car with me. Well, you tell Daniel, 
come on with the in the lions then glory to God when he had to lay on them lions that didn't eat him glory to God he turned them into a pillow God closed the mouths of those lions that's a miracle of protection This is how we're living. This is where we're living. This is the hour in which we're living. God still works miracles. Come on. My son, just a couple weeks ago, glory to God, in, 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 a, in a car accident, glory to God, total hit from the side, flipped over 360 degrees, it comes back down on the wheels, and there's not a scratch on him. And every day, my wife and I, we pray twice at night and in the morning. It feels like when we have food, when we sit at the table, it turns into intercession. It's a long prayer, which includes y'all, which includes Kenya, which includes our children and grandchildren. So God still works miracles. I told y'all miracles are happening in your life all the time. Man, if I could recount, man, I mean, I might deal with some of this next week. But, 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 but all of these different miracles. Come on. I, I mean, I got so many testimonies. That the miraculous is manifesting on our behalf all the time. All of you sitting in here, you, I mean, just your whole family dy dynamic and everything about you, it speaks of the miraculous. That's right. That's right. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where faith lives, miracles happen. Come on, stand to your feet. I pray y'all got something out of this thing, man. I want you to just lift your hands. You, you're about to tap into that miraculous realm. Come on. Come on. Lift your hands. God does not give us the record of his miraculous healing power in scriptures. If he does not want to continue that in the present day. Come on. Just whatever. Whatever. You have a right to right now. What, whatever the, the, that redeeming blood through the cross, the finished work of that cross has, a, a, ha, has made available to you and I that we must appropriate by faith. Come on, let, let, let's tap into that right now. Let's, let's, let's receive it right now in the name of Jesus. There, Father, in the name of Jesus, we turn this moment into a moment of intercession. Glory to God. Father, I bring this entire body of believers before you. I lift them above the obstacles, Lord. All of the things that are trying to prevent access to the glory and power of our God. And Father, we thank you that we have access into your presence right now, Lord. And we thank you that in your presence we find health we find wholeness we find pr protection we find provision father we thank you in the name of jesus for the glory of the lord shining here for the glory of the lord overwhelming here for the glory of the lord overshadowing our lives glory to god everything that concerns us right now jobs businesses family members grandchildren great-grandchildren nieces nephews god we declare right now that the miraculous glory to God is manifesting on our behalf the angels are moving things shifting things deliverance is taking place healing is taking place extraordinary miracles notable signs and wonders will manifest we thank you father right now that we place a demand upon you father to do the impossible shake God, you will testify. You will testify through our lives. You will manifest your power and your glory as a sign, as a wonder. God, you will use it to attract glory to God. Those that sit in the shadow of the valley of death. Those that are in chains of darkness. Those that are in the shadow of the valley of death. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Jesus.
Jesus. Let the attesting signs of the glory of God bear witness and testify to the glory of our God, our King, our risen Savior. We thank you right now for the power of the highest to overshadow. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for that miraculous power flowing through the resurrection even now. God, we're not waiting for Easter Sunday. We're not waiting for Resurrection Sunday. We're receiving right now. Glory to God, even as you stepped up to Mary at the tomb of Lazarus, you told Mary before going to that tomb, know you not that I am the resurrection and the life. You don't have to wait. Lay Boshata to the last day. In the day of resurrection, you said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though a man would die, yet shall he live. We declare, Lord, that which is dead, that which is decay, live now. Where sickness and disease is, we curse it at his roots. We command disease to dry up in the blood, in the body, in the organs, in the tissues. We command that Kobosha to lead disease to go in the name of Jesus. Shako. God loved ones. Hakamoshe, mothers, grandmothers, come on, those who are afflicted in body, come on, extend your faith, come on, lift them, come on, lift them right now, in the name, they don't have strength, they don't have the kind of access that you do, right now in the presence of God, Father, we thank you right now, let notable signs, infallible proofs demonstrate the Lordship and the glory of Jesus Christ. As we extend our faith. Come on call their names out. Clayton be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Seko. Seko. Shaka. Rotobo Sete. You sent your word. We send your word now. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Shako. Father, we declare the chains of darkness over our bloodline to be dismantled, to be broken, to be rendered powerless in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare by Resurrection Sunday, we will see resurrection happen in our loved ones. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shake it, baby. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise.